I was, you know, hopefully, you know, I was wanting to start writing something new and maybe that would sort of kick things loose and I'd, I'd get moving again. And then I went to Dragon Con and had uh, at least a dozen different fans separately come up to me and be like, so when, when is the next Cinder Spires book going to be done? Can, 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 can we please get that? And, and uh, 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 I immediately I felt so bad because it was like, oh, I was just going to walk out on this board. <laughs> yeah. And it, 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 it just, it would have only, it would have been there all by itself without anybody else in the series with it. And, you know, I think books get lonely and I don't, <laughs> I don't want that to happen. Well, if you, you have two, then, then you have to have a third, otherwise they, they're going to have conflict they can't resolve. They yeah, have exactly. Party. Yeah, we need a third one to keep it, uh, for the same reason that you need an odd number of children, so you can keep <laughs> fighting each other. <laughs> so, for the time. Uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, Fenris get, get, gets put in this book uh, because he and, he and Raoul had a very interesting relationship where Raoul kept trying to fight Fenris, and Fenris kept looking at him every time he tried to he tried to do it. You know, Fenris would look at him just like, "What is the matter with you? <laughs> Are you, you you want to fight? Are you?" That's so uncivil. You know, that's, that was sort of how Fenris was the entire time, and so Raoul never knew how to react to Fenris because he would come running up like he was going to bowl him over, and Fenris would just sit there and look at him, and Raoul would come crashing to a halt at the very end. Uh, but, but yes, but uh, uh, the character's name is Fenley, and uh, uh, he and Raoul do not get along, and, and, and I just they, they get to snipe at each other the entire book, and I love it. Because uh, I, I just get to write wise ass cats being you know being passive aggressive with each other. I think it paid for it. That's, yeah, that's an incredible job. And then you paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fortunate man. So you mentioned that yeah, you have uh, uh, Abigail, is a new viewpoint character in the mm -hmm. book. Uh, how do you determine what characters you decide to have be viewpoint characters? Um, well, in the first to present things happening in the story, because as it is. You know, I always know how it's going to happen in the how it's going to happen in the story because Harry Dresden's going to walk in and find out about it because that's what we do. <laughs> uh, uh, Harry Dresden just runs around and gets in trouble. Uh, but if you know, if I had multiple viewpoint characters, though, it, you know, it would be uh, it, would, it would be a lot easier to, to play with a lot of different with a lot of different elements of storytelling. Uh, which is to say, I would have a whole lot more rope with which to hang myself. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of happy. Uh, we, I, I, I don't I don't think I ever want to say that I regret anything about the Dresden files because I mean it's worked out kind of well for me. <laughs> and I mean my, my, I started off writing my ridiculous wizard books and things have gone well. People are like, what would you have done different? And I like look around and I'm like, not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> don't don't look too hard at it. Yeah, actually. yeah don't look too hard at me, uh, Olympian gods, um, uh, because I would definitely because I, I, I'm just a. I'm a bit of a fool who, you know, writes down the conversations of his imaginary friends, and that worked out. It's <laughs> the world. I mean, it's, if you're trying to avoid the view of Olympian gods, maybe don't write Olympian affair. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> may be wise with <laughs> Are there any other uh, projects you'd like to talk about? Oh, uh, uh, well, my, 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 the, the, the gym I'm building in the detached garage at home is kind of that. that's, that's pretty cool. I, I like to talk about that. Um, Maybe more professional nature projects. Oh, oh, folks here like the yeah. interested in. Um, well, uh, we're, there's, there's. I mean, it's it's in development for a show again. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it happens. You know, yeah, it, 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 this is generally where it is. <laughs> There's uh, whispers and rumors. Whis yes, rumors and yes, and, and, and a shadow in Hollywood. Yes, perhaps it, something will happen. Perhaps it won't. Uh, uh, I would like to. What's that? Yeah, yeah. That's Dresden. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like Dresden is almost always in development somewhere. <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't go further than that, which not, is like what most shows do. Not everybody has the patience for it, like you do. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Try and look into uh, maybe doing a, 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 an animated series. Uh, I, I, I had a friend point out, "Hey, we we think you might be able to crowdfund an animated series and, and get that going." And we actually know people at some various places. And it's like, hmm, why would I, you know, why would I not want to do a project where I get to work with a bunch of people who I know will be, you know, who, who I know actually like the material, and you know, 
want to make something cool and will really be invested in what they're doing because they're super serious nerds and uh, uh, you know, why haven't I tried working that way before? It's I, I feel a, a bit foolish actually. You know, after after working with folks who were you know just sort of partially interested in the Dresden Files while they were making a TV show. Uh, uh, I think it would be better to, to do it with a bunch of nerds. That would be that would be so much fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that way we can get like Marsters to do Dresden because then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, ma'am. I don't want to argue with people like you. <laughs> <laughs> He's the reason I started meeting you. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I was like, yeah, you work in Spring, and you introduced me to Jim Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you. That makes me feel good. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah, and then the, and then the there's upcoming work on the uh, uh, the graphic audio. Uh, do you guys know what graphic audio is? Uh, it's sort of the. Do you remember the, the the sort of the dramatic radio play that Star Wars did after Star Wars came out? They basically just take do that, but with like all kinds of books and stuff. Um, uh, so they they do a condensed version of of, of a novel. Uh, along with you know, with a, a, a lot of dialogue and special effects and sound effects and voice voice casting for all the different characters and radio uh, theater. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's straight up radio theater. Uh, so that that that's going to be coming out. That should be interesting, and I want to see that. Uh, now, is that like a transcript of your of what you've written? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, although they oh, they pots they, and pans they, in the background instead of your descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kind of wondering how long it'll be, like, without the descriptions in there, like half an hour? I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of repartee. Some of it's witty. <laughs> I haven't read it, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Well, do you want to talk at all about your next person project? Maybe just a little teaser or anything like that. Uh, well, the next book I'm putting together is called 12 Months. Uh, uh, originally, I was gonna uh, I was gonna write Mirror Mirror next in the series, but I decided it's gonna be it's gonna be much more heartrending for you all if I do it this way. So <laughs> it's part of my plan. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we're we're and this is gonna be the first time we've done a Dresden story that's not just his worst weekend of the year, which is basically <laughs> how I write Dresden books. You know, this is, whichever whichever weekend is gonna be the worst for Harry, I'm just gonna write about that. Um, but this this book actually takes pl takes place over the course of a year, where, where Dresden is trying to uh, trying to put the pieces back together. You know, he kind of went through a lot in that last one, and uh, so he's got to you know how do you how do you how do you get back up again when life knocks you down real hard? Because it, it does that to, it does that to all of us at one time or another. And uh, uh, so there's a lot of this book is about that. Plus, you know, there's you know ghouls and vampires and you know, monsters and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, just because I know you guys, <laughs> and you would get you would get so bored if I didn't throw a bunch of monsters and stuff in here. Uh, uh, really, if you think about it, it's not me who's torturing him; it's all of you. <laughs> it's what the people want. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it is. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Some real trauma happening out here. <laughs> Listen, do we need to, you know, just kind of maybe we should get like a speaking stick? Of <laughs> course. <laughs> 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 You're supposed to open up the questions, so I'd be careful, you know. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Oh, what about Kobe Gray? Yeah. Goodman Gray is the guy who uh, uh, who I want to spin the series off on when I'm done with the, the whole Dresden story, and uh, the spinoff series will be called Monster LLC uh, because you know sometimes you do need a hero and sometimes you need a miracle, but it's occasionally what you need to solve your problems is, is a good monster, and uh, so uh, Goodman Gray is a monster for hire, you know, as a as a, as a shapeshifter. And uh, uh, so I'll get to write stories that are sort of centered around him, and he's a little bit darker uh, uh, a character than Dresden is. Um, 
So, you know, I definitely want to have the monster come out from under the bed and eat the abusive parents, you know, and that sort of thing. I mean, that's, that, that, that's, the, sort of, that's the sort of, you know, stuff that's going to be happening in, in, in these books. Uh, uh, Goodman Gray is, uh, he's, a, he's a monster to the people who really need, who really need a monster to, to be dealt with. So, uh, uh, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a little bit darker than Dresden. More in the horror variety or? Well, yeah, except, you know, I mean, Gray thinks it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, really, you really get to pick all kinds of ways to dispense justice when you're, you're a, a nearly immortal shapeshifter do you, who's in the business of dispensing justice for a dollar. Um, wow, that, was, that turned really specific. <laughs> <laughs> that was way more focused than the opening statement that I thought of. <laughs> not much of an elevator pitch. Right? No, not much of an elevator More approachable. Mon but Monster LLC, that's the element of this. Yes, oh, that would be well. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, that was, that was one question. Do we have any other questions people would like to ask? <laughs> I'm going to just kind of start up here, work my way back. So we'll start here with you, please. Oh, yeah, I was wondering, I just started reading Windows, and the first thing you go through is the space cat. And then you have the Series who are who are submariners who, who appreciate the way I do that because uh, they're doing three dimensional you know age of sail battle more or less uh, and submariners are like we're the only ones who get to do three D battle that's awesome <laughs> um, uh, uh, but honestly I mean uh, the big problem was figuring out why everybody wears goggles because it was a steampunk series and so I knew there needed to be goggles and there needed to be goggles. <laughs> <laughs> you already knew why they needed justify it in the space. Exactly. Actually, you justify it within the story. To you sure guys want you. goggles. That's why he had to make them wear. <laughs> yeah. 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 Goggles and trauma. That's what that's what the people want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, exactly right. Yeah. And talking cats. Yeah. yeah. And goggles, trauma. That's what the people cats. need, actually. <laughs> yes. They're, 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 they're the heroes you deserve. <laughs> Three-dimensional battle. That's oh, yeah. Oh, about. right. Uh, but because, yeah, but because it, it took me for forever to figure out uh, how, why everybody had to wear the goggles. But once I had done that, it's like, oh, okay, that's how the story world falls together. And then it fell together for a couple of weeks, and, and you know, I, I started, you know, uh, uh, writing around it. And it's like, all right, well, and we'll just basically take uh, Star Trek uh, ta tactics. Yeah, Star Trek tactics. We can do that. That'll be fine. Uh, the, the ships need to be close enough to each other to, you know, to actually see each other, to, to shoot them with energy weapons. So Star Trek tax tactics are perfect, actually. Um, so, and then after I did that, then it was just a matter of figuring out how to, how to reference the ship. Dorsal and ventral was easy. And, uh, um, uh, uh, and then after that, just sort of imagine how it works, because these ships are being pulled through the air by sails that get pushed out in front of them, you know, uh, rather than uh, being pushed by, you know, continually pushed by sails that are uh, uh, standing up and catching the wind. Uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the ether web sails, you know, they catch the etheric energy. Uh, but yeah, once I figured all that out, then writing the battles and so on was easy. But it, it, was, it was like a month of work to figure out why everybody wore goggles. And after that, it was, it was <laughs> figuring out how to make things cool first. Yes, yes. And then justifying yeah, cool stuff. You build the rule of cool straight in yeah. to, the, to the story. Though. That's yeah. smart. Next question, please. Uh, we'll start with you, Uh, I will probably do at least one more short story anthology because people keep asking me to write short stories and I'm really bad at saying no. <laughs> you know, they'll say, I want to hear a short story about this, and I'll be like, that would be a really good short story. <laughs> oh, well, damn it, damn it, I didn't say no, I should have. Um, but yeah, there will probably be another one. Um, I'm also going to be writing uh, uh, at least one novella for every novel that comes out and publishing that independent, uh, independently. Um, and uh, uh, you know, we will, hopefully, we will we will actually see a lot more output from you over the next few years. I should be done with the next Dresden by the end of this year. Um, that, is, that is a hollow 
promise right now. <laughs> I should be. Uh, uh, well, okay, now I'm, now I'm feeling the pressure. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah. Hopefully, I'll finish that by the end of this year, and that will be uh, 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 that, that will be a, a very interesting Dresden story, uh, being as it takes place over the course of a year, and we sort of see how you know how his how his home life goes uh, during this time, as well as all the other stuff he gets into. There's I think there's there's already two short stories that are set during this year that I have to make sure to take into account in this in, in this script. Uh, uh, but uh, should get that done, and then after that we'll do, and then after that one we'll do uh, uh, a mirror mirror, uh, where we go to a, a a parallel universe that's one choice different, and, and get to see what it led to. He's been talking about mirror mirror for forever. That would be a good book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been looking forward to that. One. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I mean, you know, Dresden's going to have like you know a goatee. <laughs> that, that's the choice. Yeah. Whether or not to shave and how much that affects the world. Yeah. Well, you know, but there's going to be like eye patches and, and you know, and, and well, normally she wouldn't be wearing an outfit that shows off that much, but this is the evil universe, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, questions? Uh, you had your hand up. Somewhat, I apologize for a somewhat unoriginal question, but it's Curtis uh, nonetheless. What are you reading or watching that has you excited right now? Oh, I've been having a lot of trouble reading since the pandemic, actually. Uh, it's been very difficult to get reading. Uh, that said, what I have been reading lately is uh, uh, there's this young author. <laughs> 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 could be anybody in this room. That's right. <laughs> could be anyone here. Uh, but you know, I, but, but I've been I've been looking at his stuff, and then I've been reading my my fiance Jennifer Blackstream series. Um, uh, it's called Blood Trails Books. Um, it's uh, if the Dresden Files was a bit cozier and much more tightly plotted in, in, in terms of the way they do the mystery, it would be it would be it would be that. And the main character actually wore a hat. Yes, yes. <laughs> the main character actually wears a hat. Good point. It's a key difference. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know that's not my fault. <laughs> I, I also know it bothers you. So. <laughs> uh, more questions for us? Uh, Ma'am? Um, with the Dresden Files, um, with magic and the occult, how much of that is research that you've done and how much is that your own world building? Um, uh, how much of the, the magic and the occult in Dresden Files is, is research I've done and how much of it is my own world building? Um, uh, I would imagine it's half and half. I, I, when, I went, when I went to build the Dresden Files world, I was doing it for a class project. Um, and uh, uh, I actually had a time frame in which to put it together. It's like I had three days to do the world building, you know, so. <laughs> uh, um, so I read uh, through, um, uh, I think four different uh, books on the practice of, of, of witchcraft and occultism from uh, uh, from the metaphysical section, Borders. And uh, yeah, it was Borders. <laughs> and uh, 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 and so I basically had gone, I went through these four books about people who all incorporated you know the practice of magic into their belief system. And so and I, I read what all these people thought and had to say about it. And, I said, well, some of this stuff is really awesome, and I definitely want to use it. Some of this stuff is really inconvenient, not very good for drama, so we're going to forget all about it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and the stuff that I thought that would, you know, would make for good storytelling, you know, I kept all of that. And uh, uh, the stuff that I thought that was a little bit more boring, I, I, I left aside. And uh, uh, so far, it's worked out okay. Uh, I, I definitely don't want to jinx it. <laughs> You uh, did all the stuff that's a little too helpful for Dresden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that helps Dresden really makes my job harder. So, <laughs> questions? Uh, here in the end. Um, can you talk about your process for keeping continuation within your series and how it might be different between Dresden and Cinder Spire? Because Dresden is a bit more of a world, I imagine. So yes. The, the, the sequel that you said you kind of did it in the last year because we yeah. asked. Like, like, how much was like the world building compared to how that used to be? Like, how do you keep the continuity? 
Oh, um, continuity is pretty easy with something like Cinder Spires because um, whenever you're building something, you're building something that doesn't exist in the real world. You know, it's a. That was me. So sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I mean, would you like to come up? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. You leave her alone. <laughs> oh, I understand. Uh, where were we? Continuity. Continuity. We were continuing Steel on continuity. Track. <laughs> uh, because whenever you're building something for, for, for a world like the Sanders Spires, you're building something different. You know, you're building a, a plumed dragon. You're building, you know, a, a, a ridiculous, a ridiculous a horrible a nightmare monster worm. You know, uh, so it's, it's fairly easy to keep track of, of that sort of thing. You know, it's like, what are we going to have in this scene? A dire moth. <laughs> dire moth? Did you say moth? I said, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, 40 foot wingspan. It's, wingspan, it's an inch, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, so stuff like that is pretty easy. It's much harder with the Dresden Files because it's longer, uh, because there's so many more characters. Uh, uh, I've got several people in the beta list who, you know, are very dedicated to the continuity reading, uh, uh, who will say, nope, he's got a scar on this eye, not that eye, and, and he's also had this problem, and really should get him into the doctor this week as well. <laughs> I don't think he's got a primary care physician. Um, uh, uh, uh. But yeah, the, the betas help me tremendously with, uh, uh, with the continuity for, for, for Dresden. And so far, for Cinder, for Cinder, Cinder Spires, it hasn't been all that hard. Um, partly because the world is just so bifurcated in terms of, you know, here's the, here's the nice sort of quasi-Victorian uh, 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 societies that we've got going, about, roaming elbows with each other. Uh, 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 and then over here is Hell World, where monsters will come and eat your face. <laughs> Two minutes at most, um, so that that makes it much easier to keep those separate. Once I start writing those out, because in the third book we're actually going to be hanging out on the surface for a while and uh, uh, and seeing if people can survive. So, uh, but yeah, that's where we're going. I probably I've said too much. <laughs> uh, black T-shirt, please. Uh, out of all your series. Uh, <coughs> But it's hilarious, but it's actually what I want to do. Oh, thank um, you. Uh, which, character, which character would you personally be most terrified to run into on the street? Varg. Varg, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a, a, a nine foot tall werewolf. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd sweat him. But so which human? What? Which human character? Oh, which human character? Just my curiosity. <laughs> oh. Um. I'm gonna go with Nemesis, uh, just because Nemesis has got that whole that whole shape shifting thing going on. Because it can be anybody. Uh, let's see, uh, Marcone would actually he'd be re he could get along with Marcone. He'd be very reasonable that way. Um, uh, I tell you what, Hannah Asher isn't a very happy camper right now because uh, uh, she's she she, cause she didn't die, you know, her being a uh, pyromancer and getting hit with fire. You know, you didn't think she was going to be dead, did you? Oh. No. Um, but yeah, she's, she's definitely not very happy with Dresden at this point. Uh, but, you know, I have a weird, I have, I have a weird set of values of things to be nervous about. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Well, I mean, it sort of stands to reason, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, she got buried with it, so. White t-shirt, please. Yeah. Um, I think everyone in this room is very familiar with the works that you've done as a fully grown, mature writer with like a word processing machine and stuff. Is there anything that you wrote way back in the beginning, I'm talking like pre-college, or whatever that you that still has a place in your heart, or that you secretly would like to adapt, or that has just never really left your mind. Not, 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 not my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, the stuff that I wrote early on, uh, for the most part, uh, I, I I left it the way it was because it was awful, <laughs> <laughs> unsalvageable. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm also a writer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 
where was I? <laughs> oh, Unsalvageable. That's right. Unsalvageable. Yeah, those, those books, um, and for the most part, I haven't gone back to them because they were bad, and I understand why they were bad, uh, and, and why they, they don't work very well. I did, I did scrap a bunch of them for parts, which is where a bunch of characters for the Alera books came from. Mm. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, those early books, I did grab characters left and right, you know, from those books and, and stuck them in, evacuated them. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they, got, they got dropped, you know, they got airdropped. <laughs> from the unsalvageable world. <laughs> uh, uh, and they wound up in, they wound up in Codex Alera, a bunch of them did. Uh, the backwards. Yeah, yeah, you were Red Cuffs. Oh, um, so we had the short story from Mouse's perspective. Is there any chance we're gonna see more from Mouse's point of view or maybe Mister? Uh, are we going to see more from Mouse's point of view? Maybe. Uh, more from Mister's point of view? Definitely not. His agents won't let me. Uh, <laughs> we only have one series with talking cats. That's, yes, that's really a rule. Yeah, Mister is too. Yeah, Mister is, is he's far too important uh, to be spending his time, you know, dispensing his narrative to a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> uh, uh, so you know. I doubt we'll see. We'll ever see that. We might see something else from Mouse's point of view, though, because he's fond to write. You know, he's, he's just such a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> Great inspiration for him too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brutus is, is fantastic inspiration for Mouse. I, I've got the best dog. He's so willing and so clueless. <laughs> <laughs> Those two things come together to make for a really funny dog. Yeah, that's true. More questions, please. Uh, in the back. Butters was originally supposed to be just a, for one one story, from what I've heard, um, and then uh, he shifted gears and decided, no, I'm going to you know keep him, and he ends up becoming you know a knight. What I'm wondering is, how early were you thinking about Nemesis? Because we've learned now in Skin Game that Nemesis has basically had its hand in almost every single book. Was that from the beginning? Did you have that? If not, when and how did that come about? Yeah, it was from the beginning. Look, you think this is going to be a cool story, and it's not. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I had been trying to, to write books uh, for a while in, uh, in a class called Writing a Genre Fiction Novel, taught by Debbie Chester at the University of Oklahoma's Professional Writing Program. And uh, what you did was you wrote a genre fiction novel over the course of a semester, and that was, that was what you did. And so I had been taking her class for several years because I was trying to be a novelist with my, my English degree, which I think only set my writing career back two or three years. <laughs> um, uh, 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 but uh, I had been taking her class for a while, and uh, I had not been writing the kind of books that I knew it was within me to write. And uh, uh, she kept trying to teach me all these things that she thought were important about writing which I paid little attention to because I had a bachelor's degree <laughs> and several unsalvageable manuscripts. Yes, <laughs> in English literature with an emphasis on creative writing and she had merely published 40 novels. <laughs> so, what did she know? And what I decided, the way I decided to prove to her uh, that I knew so much more than she She would see what terrible cookie cutter pablum crap emerged from that kind of process and I wrote the first book of the Dresden Files. <laughs> you, know, you know, which showed her. <laughs> but when I, I remember when I went into the class, it was a consult course where you went in with a couple of chapters and, and then she read it and then you discussed it, you know, with a, this professional novelist. And uh, uh, so we went in and I, I, I handed over the first couple of chapters of the first Dresden and she's reading over them and she looks up at me and she says, for the first time, you did it. No. And I said, what? She said, you did. This is of professional quality. I don't know if it'll be the first thing you sell, but you will be able to sell this. You did. She says, now, I want you to come back next week with an outline for the rest of it. And she meant the rest of the novel. <laughs> so I come back next week with an outline for a 20, for a, for a 20 book long series with a three book capstone trilogy at the end of it. And, and with, with bad pun titles for all of the books, and, 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 and already the, the, the short, you know, the, the, the short uh, uh, story question written for each book along the way. And I rolled in and started talking about it, and see, 
you have to understand that she's she's a teacher. It's her job to teach me. And this is the first time I've gotten on board with her at all. You know, so I can still remember the expression on her face as she was doubtless thinking to herself, I can't kill this kid. <laughs> <laughs> but what can I say? Because there's no way he's going to sell. He's going to be able to sell this 20 book long series to a publishing house as his very first thing. And uh, uh, and so, you know, so you know, I got to the end of it and, 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 and that I had been talking for the full hour and I could get to the end and I'm like, so what do you think? And she looks back at me and she says, well, I think if you can sell a 20 book long series, should be doing all right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. And she didn't tell me I couldn't. And uh, because she didn't, I you know, just did it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of all right. Yeah, yeah, it's going okay. It's going okay. But yeah, but that was how that was how it got started, you know. And and, and doing all this stuff in, in that story world, you know, I don't like to. I don't like to throw out too much pride on the things I've done in this series, considering that it was the result of, you know, a class project that got completely out of hand. <laughs> uh, 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 so, you know, I, and I try and when I'm working now, I'm still working from the same outlines uh, that I wrote when I was, you know, that kid in his mid-twenties, because uh, I'm a little superstitious about it now, and maybe that kid knew something I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, I, I, I still stick with the, with the outlines as I've got them, you know, as I wrote them. Although I'm going to have to do, it turns out I'm going to have to do uh, 25 books total instead of 22, instead of 23. Uh, so, and I feel that's magically a stronger number anyway. You know, so, uh, but but we'll, we'll I should I hope to I hope to finish it by the time I'm 60. <laughs> so. different movies in the background. <laughs> um, like if I'm writing Dresden, it'll be something like Buffy or Helsing, you know? Because uh, uh, I've watched a lot of, of Buffy. <laughs> I, I, I have some seasons of Buffy memorized. Um, uh, uh, whereas for, uh, for the steampunk, you know, I will be uh, uh, I will be watching Jaws, or uh, 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 or I'll be watching Clue or something like that. Uh, listen to a listen to a lot of Lindsey Sterling uh, music. Oh, yeah. Kind of uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but, but other than that, the big difference is there's more characters in the in the steampunk series. It, you know, it's a third person series, so you know there's more characters to stick around between, and that causes me headaches. Uh, in terms of figuring out how I'm going to, you know, how am I going to write this part of the story? Who's going to be observing it? Who's got the most on the line? You know, etc. Um, but anyway, there you Never stopped. 
Uh, I actually had a teacher who had to go and buy a bookshelf for her office for the books that she, she you know, uh, uh, confiscated, confiscated <laughs> from me while I was reading during class, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had to come back at the end of the year with a, uh, with a hand truck and a bunch of boxes to get all my books home. <laughs> so, yeah, because I, I would just read, you know, I'm a gangster like that. <laughs> Such a rebel. <laughs> Reading at <Yeah>. school. <laughs> That's right. Yes, uh, okay, yeah, we'll start with you. We'll, we'll get right to you. It's okay. It's a good part. Um, uh, I would, I would kind of like to, I really enjoy doing it, but I don't want to take any work away from James, that poor fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of need him. <laughs> um, uh, 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 so, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing it because I really enjoyed, uh, doing the reading. Um, but, uh, uh, it's also, it's really hard, you know, doing, like doing all the voice and stuff. It's way harder than it looks. It's way harder than running a D&D &D game. You know, I figured they'd be about the same, but they're not. It's hard because there's somebody objectively making a call of no, you didn't do that. You didn't do that 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 accent right. You've got to do it again. It's like I made up this accent. How did you know I did it wrong? It's not consistent with what you did earlier. Here, listen to this. It's, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I was not watching Suicide Squad when I, when, I, when I wrote Warrior Born. I was probably watching Suicide Squad Hell to Bay when I wrote, Warrior, or when I wrote those. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Warrior Born was fun to write. And that was, uh, I sort of enjoyed writing that as the, uh, like the little Bond mission at the, beginning of the, at the beginning of the book. You know, kind of that opening Bond, you know, three minutes escape the, situa the predicament situation. Uh, 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 I wanted to, to write something like that uh, to, to get warmed up for the uh, for the for the full novel. So uh, that was fun, and I will probably keep doing such things because it seems like to, it seems to work out. So, but you had a question. Uh, yeah, you wrote Spider Man. Um, yeah. I was just wondering if you were there to think of writing for any other character besides. Oh, would I write for any other character besides Spider Man? Sure. Um, uh, well, I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, Spidey, I was really, I was super familiar with. And I've been offered the chance, at one point, uh, DC said, hey, if you want to write Batman or Supes, uh, feel free to step up and, and take a turn. And I was like, wow, that's a really great offer, but, you know, I'm not, I'm a Marvel guy. I'm not a DC guy. <laughs> you know, so it's, um, I, I can't really, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't write up to the standards of the fanboys for Supes and Batman. I could not do that. Uh, uh, I, I suppose. I suppose at this point, I might be better at it now. I might be better, better equipped for that now because I watch more Batman. But, uh, 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 what was the question? <laughs> Would you write for a different character? Would I write for a different character? A steel trap. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I might. I might write a classic one that is, you know, uh, 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 open property. Now. You know, like Sherlock or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. An Uncle Iroh short story. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, Uncle Iroh's my hero. I want to be Uncle Iroh. Yeah. You know, what? He was a man. Oh. Um, so, I just want to ask uh, urban fantasy is always part of urban, part fantasy. Always the source material, all the Scooby Doo stories and stuff, and uh, the actuality of how they interact with the world. Aside from what choices would hurt Harry the most, how do you choose what to keep the same from the source material and what to change up? Uh, well, I mean, basically, it's going to be whatever gets me to the video games after I'm done working the fastest. <laughs> uh, I, a lot of times, really, it is. It's like, which, which is going to make my life a little bit simpler? Uh, um, you know, because if you, if, I mean, you can bring somebody who turns people to stone forever and ever into your story if you want to, but maybe that sort of introduces some issues. Uh, uh, so, you know, maybe, so, so you, you don't necessarily want to, to do, uh, to pull stuff exactly out of, out, of, out of folklore all the time. On the other hand, if you are writing from folklore, um, you are 
you, you are borrowing power from some very old stories. And if you don't show those old stories proper respect, uh, uh, it's going to go over really badly with your audience, as, as Disney has noticed a bit. <laughs> um, so, you know, when you're working with those old stories, it is, it is best to show them the respect that they're due. Uh, um, so, you know, so you don't want to change it too much either. Uh, uh, so, you know, for the most part, it's, it's based on what's going to be most convenient for me, but, you, but there's a bunch of different factors to be aware of. Does your role-playing life ever influence your writing? Does my role-playing life ever influence my writing? Um, I don't think nearly as much as my writing influences my role-playing life, because you know I, I will you know be playing people through a game and I will cliffhang them right in the middle of well right at the end of the session because we, they they know that it's, it's about time to go. But if, if, if you can cliffhang your gamers. Uh, it's really handy because it helps. It, it, then they they remember what's happening from week to week, and you don't have to you know do that 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 reconstruction episode that everybody has to do at the beginning of D and D these days. What were we doing last week? Oh right, right, we were here doing this. There's one player that takes notes. Yes, exactly. And they miss a session. That session just never happened. Yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> uh, you mentioned video games. What video games are you playing right now? Um, always League of Legends, uh, which I, I'm just there for the lovingness of the community. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, just you know how sweetly and kindly they treat everyone. At League of Legends. <laughs> and uh, 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 and then lately I've I've been playing a little bit of Planet Side Two, uh, where I've got I've got a nephew who's who's in a guild, and so occasionally we will log into. You know, we will log into bombers and fly them upside down, you know, at people and so on for fun. Yeah, it's like more dark type. Yeah, and then dark type. Yeah, we've been playing dark type lately, uh, which is a first-person shooter where you you fight the you, you fight the forces of chaos and defend the emperor. As uh, well, you should. As well, you should exactly. Is your League of Legends name? Choga. Yeah. Uh, Cho'Goth is probably the, the the character I have the most experience with. When was the last time you played something that wasn't a ram though? Three years? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, I his name is random. <laughs> yes, I play random, but it's mostly Cho'Goth for some reason. <laughs> well, you know, my dad used to tell me I, I got beat up a lot when I was a kid because I was I, I might have had a bit of a mouth. And, uh, <laughs> So it's <laughs> and my dad would say, "Well, son, they can kill you, but you can't eat. They can't eat you. But if you're playing Chogoth, you can indeed eat them." <laughs> so you know, so I use my favorite chant. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, also fun. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I play, I, play, I play a bunch of them. I don't like playing assassins, but I like everybody else. Any other questions? Back in the red. Um, do you have a preference for a uh, D&D system or edition? To run. Do I have a preference for a D&D edition? Yeah. Well, I mean, I prefer first edition. I still remember where everything is. <laughs> you know, all, all these new rules, all these new rule sets, they, they, they're, they're so confusing. I, I feel like I'm getting old, baby. Yeah. Just play first edition. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Okay. Thank you, son. <laughs> Thank you. You're just unsalvageable. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. She's, she was concerned about why, why I did that to Murphy, not just what happened to Murphy, but how it happened. Uh, where she didn't actually go down in the blaze of glory, but it was just like the worst character uh, to, to have that done to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was sadistic. <laughs> and I would apologize to you 
but you all paid money for the book. <laughs> so, I'm not sure I can actually do that and feel sincere about it. But yeah, I mean, that was the, the whole point was, you know, sometimes it's not fair. Unfortunately, I know friends who, you know, who, who lost books uh, during the pandemic, and sometimes it's just it isn't fair. Huh. Any other questions to change the topic quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, if I do an alternate universe where she didn't die? Yeah. You know if you know that it when I mean you know that's gonna happen when he goes to the alternate universe because she has to be caring with an eye patch. <laughs> I, mean, I mean come on, I don't make the rules here, people. Um, uh, 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 but yeah, um, uh, we may well see her we may, we may well see her there and, and her story's not yet finished. Uh, uh, so well that's enough. I won't say that. <laughs> But, but uh, I, I think you'll appreciate where, where, where she goes. <laughs> you, uh, you know what? Uh, put your name on a piece of paper and bring it up here and drop it off. And uh, uh, because, uh, yeah, but I, I, think, I think we're going to have to add a few more people to the beta reading list. So feel free to. I would die. I'm not promising uh, I will add you. Because uh, maybe you're a terrible person. I don't know. <laughs> He might forget. That's true. It happens at his age. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the darkness is closing in. <laughs> Okay, uh, light questions, what's, what's my favorite tea? If Uncle Iroh is my hero, is it Jasmine? No, it's not Jasmine, ew. <laughs> I like peppermint. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a sucker for peppermint tea. Okay, and you have your next one, guys. Um, a lot of people, well, no, uh, what would you say, what would you that make you happy, you know, I mean, honestly. Um, uh, uh, I will say that it's really, really hard, it's really hard to, to, to preach and tell a good story at the same time. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, it can be done, but uh, I'm not good enough to do that. Um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know, but there are people who are, you know, and, and you know, the, the, the literary genre, I think, likes to do that one. I just think of literary, literature as another genre because it seems a little simpler that way to me, and I don't feel as bad. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I sidetracked myself, and, and I, I should be better than myself. I'm not doing it. Writing what you know. Oh, yeah, writing what you know. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely write what you know, but then, you know, that's the whole, the whole point of research is to go out and know some stuff. Uh, 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 and, and, you know, writers, if you don't love doing the research, if you don't love occasionally going down the rabbit hole of, well, I, I do want to know more about honey badgers. Yes, thank you, Internet. You know? um, if you're not that person, it's going to be difficult to be a writer because you've got to be able to, to go enjoy that, that, that kind of dive. You got to find out things. I had to learn all these things about uh, about what happens when an EMD goes off near a major American city. You know, now the FBI is listening. To <laughs> but that was to be expected. That was to be expected. You know, with my search history, yeah. 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 <laughs> we probably have time for about two more questions. Um, here. So, taking the context that you started addressing so early on, it's greater art. Star Wars reference that, was, that, that comes up every now and then. Is that something that is still going to be part of that piece? Just seeing you know, the last series, we're like on the cusp of big arc closing and maybe another like, sub arc opening up. Uh, uh, 
it's just the big arc. It's that that one part is just the big one. Uh, uh, I, I try not to be. I try not to complicate things too much. I don't handle com complex situations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. Okay. All right. You, you agreed with me. Uh, vehemently. Yes. yes. <laughs> vehemently. You're right. I'm right. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's, it's your question. You keep answer. sidetracking me. <laughs> or I do it to myself. A steel I mean, trap. It's not fair. <laughs> the Starborn story arc. Oh, the Starborn one. story arc is kind of like the main one. Uh, 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 so you know, you'll you'll have to put up with that for a while. You know, just until the story's over. I, I imagine. I, mean, I guess I'm a storyteller, so I know. <laughs> So you laid a solid foundation of Western Judeo Christianity as a theistic understanding of the Dreads and Biles. Yes. As the states continue to mount and we continue to get higher and higher cosmic things that are in this place, is it difficult to find meaningful ways to not have an omnipotent being step in and interfere with all of your characters? I am the omnipotent being. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, it's, it's not too terribly hard, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I guess I'm, you know, somewhat of a, of a very libertarian god. It's like, here, go out forth and learn these lessons. Ooh, that looked painful. Good for you. <laughs> well done. More lessons to learn. Yeah, more lessons to learn. Yeah. Um, but no, it's not, it's not difficult to, it's not difficult to keep, uh, 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 to keep the you know the, the the various god figures from interfering because I can always write them oh they're they're constantly you know trying to balance, counterbalance one another uh, 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 for the most part but uh, uh, yeah the, well, now I'm thinking about it geez <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh. right, and on that note I think we're gonna have to call it a session here thank, oh, thank you all so much. much.